We firmly believe that there will be no war on the Korean Peninsula. President Moon Jae-in will also make constant efforts in reaching this goal. South Korea's defense chief Song Young Moo said officials from both nations have discussed in depth the possible response to the DPRK's nuclear missile threat. Officials also talked about cooperation in the field of national defense and security. Song says South Korea will try to reclaim the command of its army from the United States as well as improve the nation's combat capability. Australian Defense Minister Maurice Payne says her country supports Seoul's efforts to respond to Pyongyang. To the U.S.-based website Defense News, top U.S. military officials who were recently in South Korea showed great interest in enhancing electronic warfare capabilities both in the skies and on the ground. The officials said the U.S. Army is doing its best to analyze the North underground facilities where the regime stores missiles, artillery and ammunition. The U.S. hopes to use electronic band waves to paralyze the operation of North Korean Army units. General Chung kyung Du spoke with his U.S. counterpart, General Joseph Dunford, on the phone late Friday night. General Chung said the two countries' alliance is stronger than ever and expressed hopes to move forward with their annual military committee meeting and sec sec security consultative meeting both scheduled for later this month. The two countries also plan to hold joint military drills off the coast of the Korean Peninsula next week. I, I didn't have a schedule, but if I did have a schedule, I would say we are substantially ahead of schedule. This afternoon, in a little while, I'll be giving a speech on Iran, a terrorist nation like few others, and I think you're going to find it very interesting. Yesterday, things happened with Pakistan. And I have openly said Pakistan took tremendous advantage of our country for many years. But we're starting to have a real relationship with Pakistan, and they're starting to respect us as a nation again, and so are other nations. They are starting to respect the United States of America again. And I appreciate that. And I want to thank the leaders of Pakistan for what they've been doing. In this administration, we will call evil by its name. We've done more against ISIS in nine months than the previous administration's done during its whole administration. By far, by far. And ISIS is now being dealt one defeat after another. We're confronting rogue regimes from Iran to North Korea, and we are challenging the communist dictatorship of Cuba and the socialist oppression of Venezuela, and we will not lift the sanctions on these repressive regimes until they restore political and religious freedom for their people. All of these bad actors share a common enemy, the one force they cannot stop, the force deep within our souls, and that is the power of hope. That is why, in addition to our great military might, our enemies truly fear the United States, because our people never lose faith, never give in, and always hope for a better tomorrow. As long as we have pride in our country, confidence in our future, and faith in our God, then America will prevail.
already tense, very tense Baltic region in Poland. And that's a move which Moscow claims violates that fundamental peace treaty signed between Russia and NATO so long ago that was designed, in fact, to end uh, decades of Cold War tensions between the two sides, which, of course, we all know recently have flared up again. And the Russian Defense Ministry spokesperson believes the additional deployment really undermines Russia's own security by surrounding it by, with hostile forces. Let's take a listen. In contrary to the claims of NATO and the U.S. on the insignificance of the troops approaching the Russian border, in fact, now it's not a brigade there, but a U.S. mechanized military division. Hmm, so how's the Pentagon explained the reason for moving these forces? Well, we all know that Washington is constantly referring to Russia as an enemy, a threat, that they must protect themselves and their European allies against. But the Pentagon spokesperson insists that this division has a purely defensive attitude. We are in, in those places as a defense and a defensive posture, and we're very clear about that, and anyone who sees th anything differently um, would be wrong. Now, of course, the U.S. has also said that it's a simply a matter of rotation between new and old regiments, but it's worth noting that their rotation would not take them back home, would not take them out of Europe, in fact, altogether. It would actually just move them to another Eastern European country, Romania. And at this point, Russia has uh, expressed that they reserve the right to also bolster their defensives if need be. And what about the country at the center of it all, Poland? What does Poland have to say about this? Well, the Polish defense minister recently called for more U.S. troops to be deployed to his uh, country in order to, quote, protect it from external threats. And those comments actually came right on the heels of the Zappa drills, which were condu conducted in September between Russia and Belarus. And they caused an uproar in international media. Uh, lots of speculation that the maneuvers were being non-transparent, non with speculation just swirling that the Russian troops that came to Belarus were actually there to stay. They're about to do an exercise in Belarus, uh, Russia, uh, that's going to entail up to 100,000 Russian troops moving into, into that country. The great concern is they're not going to leave. The UN headquarters in New York, the three discuss the North Korea crisis and climate change as well as development and human rights issues. Pan said there's always a possibility for a dangerous miscalculation when tensions are so high on the Korean Peninsula. He suggested all sides take steps to defuse the crisis. Guterres echoed Ban's sentiments, saying North Korea and the U.S. should make moves to de-escalate the standoff. Vox News site Friday, North Korea is one of seven nations that have the ability to mess around with other countries' information systems. The other countries on the list are the United States, Russia, China, Britain, France and Iran. Vox says that while North Korea has the smallest economy and is under heavy international sanctions, the regime is able to direct massive resources to its cyber program because the central government controls everything in the state. He says the two allies plan to conduct maritime exercises from October 16th to the 26th in the East Sea and the West Sea. The training is aimed at boosting communications, interoperability and partnership with the U.S. Navy's 7th Fleet. American units participating in the exercise include the USS Ronald Reagan and destroyers with the South Korean Navy fielding an Aegis destroyer, anti-submarine aircraft and naval choppers. Meanwhile, the top military officials of South Korea and the U.S. spoke on the phone Friday night to discuss enhanced cooperation against North Korea's repeated threats. South Korea and Australia voiced deep concerns over rising tensions caused by North Korea's endless provocations and stressed the importance of resolving the regime's nuclear issues through diplomatic means. South Korea's Foreign Minister Kang kyung hwa and Defense Minister Song yong moo met with their Australian counterparts Julie Bishop and Maurice Payne at Seoul's Foreign Ministry for so-called 2 plus 2 talks, which have been held every other year since 2013. Top of the agenda was North Korea's provocations, including the regime's sixth nuclear test and a series of ballistic missile launches. Our two countries discussed ways to enhance cooperation against North Korea's nuclear and missile threats and other defense security related issues. Foreign Minister Kang Kyung ha said the two sides condemned the recent nuclear test by the North, calling it a violation of UN Security Council resolutions. 
The two sides agreed that diplomatic efforts are needed to peacefully achieve the regime's complete, verifiable, and irreversible denuclearization. Australian Foreign Minister Bishop urged Pyongyang to come back to the negotiating table. And we had a very significant discussion on the ways that we can work together through deep cooperation and collaboration with a view to deterring any future illegal tests by North Korea and to compel North Korea back to the negotiating table with the aim of denuclearising the Korean Peninsula. South Korea also holds two plus two talks on the ministerial level with the United States. Well, I think that when you look at North Korea, it is a continuation of the policy where we look at it in a holistic manner. It's clear that Iran has aided and abetted the ballistic missile technology when it comes to North Korea, which is why they've made the strides they have. But still, there's a lot of room for diplomatic solutions with North Korea. At the end of the day, the United States will be prepared with all instruments of national power, including the military options, to be able to react to them. The more North Korea builds up this capability, the more the United States has to demand that they cease to assist and denuclearize the North Korean peninsula. Now, obviously, what they're trying to search for now, back to the Iran thing and how it connects to North Korea, is that the, a lot of folks believe that secretly uh, Iran is there fomenting trouble and helping the North Koreans. And given all the money they got, 60 billion plus, when all of those assets were unfrozen uh, back a couple of years ago, they've been using that for a lot of nefarious uses. That w w First of all, do you think that is the case? And do you think the North Korea is a beneficiary? And as a result, that is why North Korea can be so cavalier in the face of our threats, because they've got money to do what pretty much they want. I think it's, there's absolutely going to be a connection with that. The intelligence community is clearly finding the ties that are there, all the indicators that are there. And so consequently, while the United States will continue a diplomatic effort, when you look at some of the military things we can do, we really need to step back and ensure that there are dis additional THAD put into both South Korea and Japan. We need to look at bolstering the defenses in Hawaii because if we don't kneel, the Pacific Rim is going to start to come under threat from this nuclear threat from North Korea. And in reality, we have to be able to be prepared for it. We don't want it to happen. I think there are hmm. options available. But nonetheless, you prepare for the worst option while still working toward the best one. I know you're not a market guy, Commander, but I'm always amazed by the nonchalant attitude of markets and investors who seem to think this too shall pass or this isn't a big worry or our crackdown on Iran is a good thing, ignoring uh, North Korea's saber rattling. It, it, it's, it's not a, a, a whoop de doo thing. So I wonder whether we risk whistling past the graveyard or the markets are kind of telegraphing something. We're, we're on top of this. Don't worry about this. What do you think? I think when you look at it, Neil, the decision today by the president when it comes to not recertifying the Iran agreement is a very strong signal for U.S. markets. Let's face it, Europe was going all in to aid and abet everything Iran was doing and give them billions of dollars into a market. Our, the United States basically held back, and I think that our markets looked at it and said, you know, we're not going to jump into this right away because clearly this president throughout the campaign and now that he's in office has telegraphed and signaled he didn't like the agreement, he didn't like what Iran was doing throughout the Middle East and across the globe, South America, North Korea, and so consequently we're not as invested, and if things do have to tighten down, especially with the IRGC certification today, you're going to see we're going to start tightening the screws. Who's going to be affected? European markets, U.S. markets can take advantage of that in the meantime.